It'll, it'll work. Okay, then I'll start. I'm deeply honored to be speaking at Pat's 90th. And uh, Pat was chairman of the philosophy department when I was hired as assistant professor of philosophy right after my PhD in mathematics from MIT way back, I think I can say way back, way back in September 1967. Wow. Pat Soupy is arguably the greatest polymath on the planet today. And I'm going to talk a bit about recent advances in a long-standing project of mine in the Foundations of Mathematics. Now, Foundations of Mathematics is just one of countless areas in which Pat has made substantial contributions. Uh, after writing two well-received textbooks in 57 and 60, uh, still after I was born, but not much after, uh, Pat's main interest in foundations of mathematics went into the direction of the foundations of mathematics as used in the sciences. And there's a focus on the foundations of finitism, geometry, and infinitesimal reasoning. Uh, here is uh, 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 some of the papers of Pat in the Foundations of Mathematics, the two uh, textbooks which are reprinted by Dover now, uh, and um, uh, Geometry here, and uh, 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 Philosophical Implications of Tarski's work, Shakai, uh, I, I perhaps, I'm perhaps, I don't know the pronunciation, Chakai, Chakwe. Okay. I, I will. I will uh, continue. Uh, Summer. I can. I, who is here? I can. Uh, I can uh, pronounce that. Uh, now, of course, there are many more contributions to other aspects of logic by Pat. This is just uh, uh, what I would call foundations of mathematics uh, uh, being uh, somewhat restricted. But Pat has many more papers in. in, in, in all kinds of aspects of the logic. Some of them arguably foundations of math, but I decided uh, to cut it down there. All right, so, but Pat, I talked to Pat, Pat wants me to talk about my stuff, and not his stuff. Okay, so, is that all right? Okay. So, uh, the usual axioms for mathematics. Now, I doubt if many of you can recite the commonly accepted axioms of mathematics, uh, and this won't be a problem for what I want to say. Uh, the usual setup is ZFC, or Zermelo-Franco set theory with the axiom of choice. And uh, the variables of the system range over sets with a single primitive relation of membership written epsilon. And uh, equality is also taken as primitive. This is the standard setup, the gold standard. Uh, ZFC consists of intelligible axioms about sets together with the usual axes and rules of first-order predicate calculus with equality. Uh, ZFC is gigantic overkill for the support of mathematical proofs. It is so successful as a general foundation for, for mathematics, it is so successful that mathematicians today generally have no idea what it is, but are at least aware of its existence. In other words, the mathematicians are not pushing the boundaries. If they were pushing the boundaries, they'd have to go pull off the dust off the shelf and see if something's legal or not. It is so successful that it is virtually unknown in detail, except, you know, magician experts. All right, so um, with that background, the classical limitations of ZFC. Yet ZFC does have certain limitations. An obvious issue concerning ZFC or for that matter, any proposed system for supporting mathematical proofs, is whether it supports a contradiction. Prima facie, any system that supports a contradiction is worthless as a foundation for mathematics. I could go on with a tiny footnote, but that's the standard point of view. Uh, so we want to be certain that ZFC is consistent, i.e. free of contradiction. But from work of Kurt Gödel, we have the following classical limitation of ZFC. Either ZFC does not prove that ZFC is consistent, or ZFC is not consistent. Uh, the generally accepted view is that the former holds, namely that ZFC is consistent, the usual view, and 
ZFC does not prove that ZFC is consistent. So it's limited in that way. Um, furthermore, Gödel's work shows that this situation cannot cannot be uh, uh, repaired by modifying ZFC. So this is an irreparable situation. All right. Now we've learned to accept this first limitation of ZFC. ZFC does not prove that ZFC is free of contradiction. However, this does not reveal any limitation of ZFC for any what might be called, quote, normal mathematical purpose. There is a crucial problem in abstract set theoretic mathematics called the continuum hypothesis, which asserts that every infinite set of real numbers is in one one correspondence with the integers or the real numbers. Every infinite set of real numbers is in one one correspondence with the integers or the real numbers. And Gödel and Cohen in the 30s and 60s established the following limitation of ZFC that ZFC can neither prove nor refute the continuum hypothesis. So this is a limitation of ZFC for some normal mathematical purpose. The Gödel-Cohen development sparked a substantial development whereby further limitations of ZFC for abstract set theoretic mathematics was established. Now what do we mean by abstract set theoretic mathematics? Well, the key feature of abstract set theoretic mathematics is that extremely general, uncountable sets are involved. In the continuum hypothesis, arbitrary infinite sets of real numbers are involved. Examination of mathematics reveals that the reasonable, uncountable sets, the mathematically reasonable, uncountable sets, are Borel measurable subsets of complete separable metric spaces. <clears throat> Even this is far more than what is encountered for, for ordinary garden variety purposes. What happens if we're to give a more reasonably concrete formula, formulation of the continuum hypothesis? Borel continuum hypothesis asserts the following. Every infinite Borel set of real numbers is in, one one is in Borel 1-1 one one correspondence with the integers or the real numbers. That is the obvious uh, Borel continuum hypothesis, being sensitive to the fact that in mathematics, sets of, of uh, uh, uncountable sets coming up are Borel measurable subspaces of a complete separable metric space. Okay, Borel continuum hypothesis is a well known theorem, however, of ZFC from the Polish school, Hausdorff Alexandrov. So the independence from ZFC is removed in this way. By, by taming the pathological. Now, the new limitations of ZFC I want to talk about are much more concrete than Borel measurable sets and functions even. And the new limitations involve only rather concrete, discrete, and even finite mathematics. Caution. It is doubtful if any discrete or finite mathematical problem already arising in the, liter in the mathematical literature by people other than me trying to do this <laughs> are neither provable nor refutable from ZFC. But I argue and believe strongly that this would be inevitable, but we're in the wrong, I'm in the, I'm born too early uh, for this, and so I wish to uh, construct what I see from the future. So we claim that the new examples are simple and natural and strategic enough to, one, conform to existing standards for normal mathematical investigations of a concrete nature, and two, provide interesting and valued concrete mathematical information. And I work with leading core mathematicians concerning strategy for integrating the examples further into current concrete mathematical culture. And I can prove it by correspondence. So, okay. Now I'm going to present a recent example of a simple concrete statement, neither provable nor refutable in ZFC. In fact, the statement is provable using certain far-reaching and well-studied extensions of the ZFC axioms, but not in ZFC alone. Uh, let Q be the set of rationals. We begin with the following well-known statement. Uh, oh, I use the rationals later. 
Every set of ordered pairs contains a maximal square. Okay, by a maximal square, I mean a subset of the form A cross A. So, uh, w uh, and by maximal, I mean it's a subset of the form A cross A, which is not properly contained in any subset B cross B. Now, I even think this may have an interesting physical interpretation. You know, non-deterministic, this is non-deterministic, this maximal square. So, you know, you pour some liquid into some, some uh, 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 container of hay or something, you know, and it's spreading around, you know, maximally or whatever. You know, I mean, you, you can make some image of this, uh, it, you know, it, it, maximal, maximal things, maximal objects containing, you know, contained in things is something that probably has an interesting uh, a psychological or physical interpretation, which I don't begin to exploit, but I think it may be exploitable. Um, now, in the countable case, this is proved by a straightforward greedy construction. You enumerate the, you enumerate the uh, field of the set of ordered pairs, and you start 